Good morning, Kempsville Church. Is it not a beautiful day in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. So, so glad to see everyone. Everyone joining online. Thank you for uh, joining us this morning. Um, At this time, I would just ask if you're able, uh, let's stand up and enter a time of worship. So wonderful is your unfailing love. The cross has spoken mercy over me. Mercy over me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart could fully know. How glorious, how beautiful you Oh! 
Let's worship the Lord this morning and tell him, Lord, your love never fails. Yes. The one thing that remains is his love. Yes. The one thing that will never remain from the world is love. The one thing that will never remain from our parents, from our friends, from our relatives is the love. But one thing that comes from God and that will remain is the love of God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's, let's just lift up our hands and worship the Lord this morning. But tell him, Lord, I love you, Lord. I love you, Master. Thank you, Lord, for sending your only begotten Son, Jesus, Lord, to die for us on the cross, to shed his blood for us. Oh, to demonstrate your love that you have for us, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let the spirit of love be poured out to each and every one of us this morning. Oh, let's just experience his love this morning. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, God. Oh, we magnify you, God. Oh, we lift up your name, oh God, this morning. Open our eyes today, oh God. Open our eyes, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Master. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart.
Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Let's hear, let's hear the church sing. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Praise the Lord. Do we see him as the heart of worship? When we're worshiping, is, is he the focus of it for us? Regardless of song, regardless of situation, regardless of who's singing, maybe it's not our favorite artist, but we're still worshiping. No matter what the song is, he is the heart of it all. He is the one that should be the center of all that we do. Let's pray to him and honor him for that. Jesus, we thank you. You are the heart of our worship. It is all because of you, Lord. We can make it about so many other things, the circumstances that we bring into our lives, the things that are going on, things that will distract us, Lord. But no, when we worship, it is about you, Lord. Let it be central to everything that we say and we do as we glorify your name. You are wonderful. You are lovely. You are, you are awesome, Lord. You deserve all of our praise and all of our honor. Every time we come into this house and we go by and by and we are worshiping your name, let you be the focus. Not the song, not the, the artist, nothing else, Lord. You are the focus. You are the one that is being glorified. You are the one that has been there for us. You are the one that took our sin upon the cross and saved us. We thank you, Lord. We glorify your name. We worship you because you are worthy of all worship. You are worthy of all honor. You deserve it all, more than we could ever provide because you did more than, than we could ever imagine, Lord. We thank you for that. We glorify your name. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. As we continue in prayer, there are names that are going to come up on the screen of those that have reached out to us and they've said, these are things going on in our lives. These aren't things we put on the screen just for, you know, to, to fill it up. These are real needs. These are people that need a touch from the Lord. It's easy for us each Sunday to look past some of these things. But take a second and, and pick one or two things off that list that come to your heart, come to your mind as you read them. And let's pray over those for a moment. If you have a need that's not represented there and you feel comfortable doing so and you want to lift up your hand so that those around you can, can come and pray for you, feel free to do that. Raise your hand right now. If you have something going on in your life, you don't feel like sharing it. The Lord sees that. The Lord knows that. We can pray for that too. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for how wonderful you have been to our lives. Everything that you've done to this point, we know that you are faithful. We've seen it time and time again, Lord. You've been standing in the gap for us, Lord. You've been faithful. And we know each request that's represented here is someone who needs a touch from you. There's so many situations that are health-related, Lord. We pray for wisdoms for doctors and nurses and medical teams, Lord, but more so than that, we pray for divine healing for those that need your touch, Lord. You know each and every one of these situations. You know what they need more than we even do. We may not even know who put this request in, Lord, but we know that you see them. You love them, you care for them, and you want to touch their lives. We pray and ask and seek that you do that, Lord. We know that our prayers are not going void, but you are active in this world. And these prayers go out and you hear them, and you touch these folks that we're praying for. For those with needs in the room, Lord, we pray for them. We care for them, Lord. They are our brothers and sisters. They are your sons and daughters. You care about them, Lord. You want to see what's best for them, Lord. So we pray knowing that you are already doing an amazing thing in their lives. You're going to continue to do it, Lord. We pray knowing that we will hear praise reports down the line from what you've done. We pray in expectation, Lord, and thank you already for the things that we're going to see down the road. You are faithful. You go before us, and your Holy Spirit guides us. I pray that we represent you well, Lord and that we can continue to be your hands and feet to those around us. Let us be the answer to someone else's prayer as well, Lord. Guide us, Lord. Touch our lives. 
In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. It's great to have you here at Kempsville Church. You may be seated for a moment. As the ushers prepare to give, I want to give you a quick update. Uh, we're having a mission Sunday this morning. Uh, Missionary Cruz Paniagua has joined us. He's actually uh, down with the kids right now. It worked out perfectly that the kids are doing a missionary series. And so they were able to hear from him this morning and hear what he has going on. We're going to hear that a little bit later this morning. But before we do that, as we turn to giving, I want to let you know where we are in our missions giving for this year. So I believe we have that uh, slide. Yeah, so, so far we have raised $20,199.97. We literally have it counted to the penny for you, but so that we're about 45% of the way towards our goal for missions giving for this year. So thank you so much for your faithful giving, making missions a priority. You know, we, we sponsor many mini, uh, missionaries in the world, and it's so great when they can come and join us, but even when you're giving, when they're not physically with us as well, that we can keep that up all year long. And so you'll have an opportunity this morning, uh, you'll hear from um, Pastor Cruz and what he has going on in the world, but if you'd like to give now, you can label your giving this morning as Cruz Missions, or any missions giving or general offering this morning is also going to go towards his ministry if you'd like to give toward that today. Um, there will also be opportunities if you want to give online. We have that as well. You can text to give. That number will be on the screen shortly. Um, and then there's the offering boxes in the foyers. If you give after service, you want to fill that out, drop in those boxes, you can do that as well. If this is your first Sunday with us, you should have received a Connect card. You can fill that out, and as the offering comes around, you can drop that right into one of those bags. Or after service, you can put it in the boxes in either foyer. As the ushers come up, let's pray for our offering this morning. Father, we thank you for every provision that you've given us, Lord. We know that it's not, it's not ours. Everything that we have is yours, Lord. You provided it to us. We can't get it by our own means, Lord. You have given us the means to do so. We are so blessed, and you give us an opportunity to bless others as well and to give back to you what is already yours. I thank you for that opportunity, Lord, as we continue to worship you in our giving. You are awesome and deserve it all. We thank you for this opportunity to partner with you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Everything I need you got. There's honey in the rock. Keep 
trust in you. We thank you, Lord. Like the song says, you've given us every provision that we need. We can just count on you, Lord. You have provided for us. So important for us to remember that each and every day as we worship you, Lord, to glorify your name. If nothing else, you've given us your son. You've given us your son that provided a way for us, Lord. Everything else is secondary to that, but we thank you for all the provision and blessing that you put in our lives as well. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in your house together with your people, glorifying your name and worshiping you and being a part of reaching the world. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Well, I'm going to introduce uh, Pastor Cruz this morning. So great to have him with us. Uh, he's been here for, if you've been here for a while, you've seen him many times as he's joined us. And I want to thank the worship team as well. They did a wonderful time this morning, uh, bringing us into a time with the Lord. But Pastor Cruz, he ministers in South America, Central America, and around the world as he helps plant churches, as he instructs ministers, and is along with them every step of the way. Um, he wanted to be here so much with us that he battled his passport process and everything else to make sure he could be here. So we thank you so much for his ministry. Thank you, Pastor Cruz, and love to have you join us now. Thank you, Pastor Brett. What a blessing to be with you this morning. God bless you. It's a pleasure. Today is a beautiful, hot Sunday. <laughs> we are uh, in South America now, especially where I live in Sao Paulo, Brazil. We are now in winter. So we are 45, 48 degrees. Uh, uh, and here it's hot. My wife is suffering because she, down, she doesn't like cold weather. I love cold weather. I'm here. She's there. She was like, okay, we, I, 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 I should go. And you stay here with the girls because I, I'd rather be in the hot weather than in cold weather. So it's a blessing to greet you from our family. Uh, as you know, so my wife Katie is doing well. She's really a uh, full-time mom, but also full-time minister working with me and all the projects and the ministry that we're doing. So just in case those who don't know me, my wife is the lady with the long hair. I don't have two wives. <laughs> Sophie, my daughter, my 22 years old daughter, she's doing great. She's working in the favelas in Brazil. Uh, favelas are like the most dangerous ghettos that you can find in Rio de Janeiro. So she's working there. Uh, she's been working there for three years. She's about finishing the, the seminary as well. So she's graduating and also she was training the missionary training center in Sao Paulo, so she's now came back home with us in Sao Paulo, and she's been in a season of resting. You know, every three years as missionary, we need a time to refresh, to stop, because the stress that, you, that we are exposed in the field is really, really good, uh, difficult. So she's now with us. Maria Victoria is doing great. She's six year old. Uh, we moved to Brazil six months ago. I I'm gonna tell you a little bit more 
uh, about the story, but we have been living six months in Brazil, um, and now my daughter, the six-year-old, speaks fluent Portuguese. And it's amazing six months, how she learned in six months. Now, when I'm trying to speak in Portuguese and preaching in Portuguese, she corrects me. She says, Dad, it's not like you're saying. It's this way. You know, she's helping me. She's now my teacher, my Portuguese teacher. And Maria Fernanda, she's the one who had the surgery. And she's doing better. She's still dealing with the speech. But it's a beautiful princess. So you can go next. And I have a... Uh, just so you can see the, no, the family better. And I have a new, brand new baby. <laughs> so we have Juan David. You know, this part of multiplication, we take it seriously. Not only planting churches and multiplying disciples. And that's very interesting because for 10 years, my wife and I tried to have babies. I, I remember the first time we came here, I, I, I'm trying to remember, it was like almost eight years ago, the first time we came to Campsville. Uh, we didn't have baby. It was just my wife and I came, and God spoke to me, and, his, and, and he promised to me that I'm going to have a baby. And I remember one day I was praying, and God spoke to my heart and said, you're going to have a baby boy. It's going to call, be called Juan, or John, Juan. And I remember going to my wife and said, that was like, 12 years ago, I went there and said, sweetie, God spoke to my heart. Ed, we're going to have a baby. It's going to be, it's going to be, his name will be Juan or John. And God spoke to me in Luke chapter 2. Or 1, sorry, when, when he gave the promise of John the Baptist. And without knowing that she was pregnant at that moment. And we lost that baby. So then we wait for one year. We wait. We, have, we work again. In having the baby, she got pregnant, and we also loved that baby. So, by the way, they're watching online. I, I, f I forgot to say that. Hi, hola, mi amor. Hola, Maria Victoria. Hola, Maria Fernanda. They love when I do that because they are li watching live. Like, that is in TV. She said, they think that I'm a famous guy who is in, in, on TV because they don't identify that when I say that. And she goes to school. My dad is on TV, and he's saying hello to me. So I, they always love that. They are watching on live now. So, so we, we lost that baby as well. So I was like, okay, God, what happened? You know, uh, you promised me a baby boy. So then third year we tried again. She got pregnant. And she couldn't get pregnant. For almost three years she, we, she couldn't get pregnant. I was like, okay, God, what happened? First I was like uh, ready. One act, she got pregnant. Then she couldn't get pregnant. And we just trust God. We wait for a while, and finally a baby came, who is Maria Victoria, the six month years old, the six years old. And we, okay, good. Then we tried again. We lost that baby, and then Maria Fernanda came, which is the second, the, the, thir the three years old. And my wife said, Cruz, enough. Factory is closed. No more babies. I'm tired. I've been pregnant for 10 years because she's pregnant, loses the baby, got pregnant again, lose. Say, I'm tired. I, I'm done because you know, Sophie, my 22 is not bi biological of my daughter. I had her before I met Jesus, not? but we raised her up. So, and I was dealing with my wife, and my my we, my, matri my, 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 my problems, my discussion with my wife were, yes, but God promised John, you cannot close the factory. Because God spoke to me 12 years ago. He said that I'm going to have a baby called John. And she said, no, John is in heaven. No, John promised me. And that was our fighting. I said, and we were like in our prayer, yeah, sweetie, John, John, no, John, no, John, no, yes, John, please, John, no, no. And suddenly, she was taking care of the process. I don't know how, John came. <laughs> she was pregnant, and I was like, it's a boy. She said, how do you know that it's a boy? I know it's a boy. Why do you know? How, do, how can I be sure? I said, because it's my last opportunity to have a boy, big boy. <laughs> so... John came, he's now five months old, Juan David, John David. Uh, Juan David is a blessing, the opportunity to have our baby boy. So now, eight years ago when we came, we couldn't have baby, now we have four. <laughs> Praise God. 
God always accomplished his promises. So we're so thankful and so glad that John Juan David is with us. So uh, uh, we moved to Brazil uh, six, six, six months ago. Uh, I, uh, I was in a process of, of, of ministry. As you see, I always bring this slide updated with all what we have been able to do in the last years. So in the last is eight years of ministry since 2015 to 2023. It's been the ministry that we were able to do over. Now, we, the last time we came, we were 6,000. Now we are in 8,353 church planters. It's amazing. It's amazing what God is doing two years during all 2022 and three, more than 2,000 church planters. Hey, again, I want to be accountable with you. We have 8,353 pictures, names, places, emails, phone numbers, addresses of every one of our church planters. They are not just numbers for numbers. They are people who are in the field making a difference. Over 100,000 people reach. I love this. 121,000 water baptisms. It's amazing because you may have a lot of people in the church, but, but when you baptize somebody, it's a mark of a new disciple coming. So you're not recycling membership, you know. It's, it's a new believer who's been discipled and now accepts Jesus. So small groups, leaders trained, pastors, mentors, refugees assisted. So that's, that's a successful story of numbers. But... Uh, Last year, we got into a crisis. I call it the crisis of success. Because sometimes when we come here, we, we only come to share good news. But in between our speaking, <laughs> I'll tell you, a lot of tears, a lot of fears, a lot of crisis and things that we usually don't share because we are here to share good news. But I said this time... I'm going to share with the church one of the crises that we lived last year, and it's the crisis of success. When you see those numbers, you see, what am I doing this? If I have a... <laughs> okay. I was like, okay, do you hear me? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> so the crisis of success. Uh, we said, okay, this year, we, I'm going to share about what happened. So last year... We got into a crisis because such a great numbers, great numbers. This next week, I'm going to the General Assembly, and I was ch sharing with pastor that I need to go to get a tie and a suit because I will be appointed and honored for world mission, for all my work, whatever. So I need a, to use a pastor's outfit, a bishop outfit, sorry, which I love. But I don't have it because we usually are in this way in South America. So amazing, 8,000 church planters. In, um, but we got into the crisis of thinking, okay, we are doing this, but what kind of churches are we planting? Because when you have the incremental explosion and growth, you got into a point where you cannot control or manage the quality of what's happening. And I'm not saying that it's bad. But I say, there is something that we are missing. The second problem that we have in, in, this, in our successful story is that the way we, we start planting churches like, like crazy, but 8,000 church planters means 8,000 less members in local churches. And the pastors at the beginning were very excited. Oh, great, Pastor Cruz, you, because I, I went to the churches, shared the vision, and said, yes, I'm on board. I'm going to plant churches because the church planters are in local churches. And I say, thank you, Pastor. So we recruit the church planter, we train the church planter, we send the church planter, and then thank you, Pastor. Next year I came back. Pastor, you have more church planters? Oh, yeah. Second year, I'll do the same. The third year he started like, hmm. You're taking my leaders, basically. <laughs> That's what you're doing. And we were like kind of having babies without mothers. And we realized and we said, what if instead of focusing on church planters, 
we start focusing in mother churches and helping the local churches to become the mothers of the creature. Helping the pastor to be developed, adding value to the pastor, helping the local church to develop, to grow, and in that way of growing, so we could see the manifestation of new churches as a consequence of a process. So we had a, cre a crisis. Also, during that time of crisis, I don't know if I shared with you this last year, but I'm going to say again, we got a problem. Uh, we got into a, a, a my, KD, my, my, my wife, my father-in-law passed away. Our baby was born with the problem in the palate. We, we got a scam and we lost 80% of our savings. So it was a crisis, you know. We were in the top of our ministry and suddenly a crisis came. My wife was also almost kidnapped. And I said almost kidnapped because finally she couldn't escape from the situation there in Ecuador. So we realized, okay, God, you're trying to say something. Because, you know, when things are not as you expected, it's not the devil who is trying to destroy you. It's God that is trying to say something. Because if you are in the hand of God, the enemy will touch you as much as God allowed him to touch. Because you're in the hand of God. So we, 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 things start going like challenge. And we say, okay, God, what are you trying to tell us? And God spoke to our heart and said, I'm stretching you because I want to take you to the next level. Because I was like Job. Job, you remember, God, why to me? Why did this happen? And God spoke to my heart and said, God, Cruz, you are so dramatic. Because we're sometimes dramatic. I said, do, do you really want to experience what Job experienced? And I said, no, God, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for all what happened. And he spoke to my heart and said, I'm stretching you because I want to take you to the next level. So we start asking God, what's the next level, God? Where, where, where do you want to take us? Why all this crisis is happening? Why we are experiencing this situation financially, family? Why we don't feel the contentment of doing what we are doing when we have such a great number? Why we are trying to go to the church and help pastors? Why this? And he spoke to our heart and said, I want you to go global. Global means going beyond the organization, beyond Latin America, but I want you to go deeper. And when he spoke to go deeper, we were too focused in what we do that we were forgetting what we are in God. So doing for God does not guarantee what you are in God. And we were too focused in the task of God, in the work of God, that we were forgetting about the God of the work, the God of the mission, the God of, of of supply. So he, he spoke, spoke to us and said, I want you to slow down. I want you to rest. <laughs> I want you to slow your pace and let me be God in your life. So praise God for that. <laughs> so through the crisis, we went to a process. I got a sabbatical, 42-day sabbatical, just resting, just being with my family, just trying to hear what God wants, to, wants me to do. And you know what God said? Nothing. Because you, we Pentecostal, we're expecting like, okay, six weeks sabbatical. First week, I'm going to be silent. Second week, I'm going to feel the presence. Third week, I'm going to hear the voice. Fourth week, I'm going to see the flame. Fifth week, I'm going to contemplate the glory. Sixth week, I'll be in the third heaven. But nothing happened. God didn't speak. But the only thing what I felt is a confidence and a trust that God, that God is working in our life and in our ministry. And even though we don't feel, we don't feel that he's working, and even though we were in a crisis, we had the confidence that God is in control. And I took my burdens and said, God, 
You are my God. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to do whatever you want to do. When we reduced this, the pace, because I was trying to go too, to go too fast. And God's speed is eternity. I would never beat God in my speed. So he said, slow down, rest. I want you to take it easy that I'm going to show you the next season. So God spoke to our heart after my 42 days when he didn't speak. <laughs> But we had the feeling and the confidence that he, had, he was in control. So I had a dream. And that dream, I was taking the hand of a lady, a pastor lady in Brazil. They were a storm, and she was afraid about going to the storm to face the wave, the waves, the sea, the ocean. And I said to her, don't worry, pastor. Give me your hand. I'm going to help you. Don't face the waves. Just go in deep into the water and then let the waves to go over you. Don't fight them. That was Saturday night during, during my, my sleeping. Sunday morning, God spoke to me. If you can find Psalms 107.28, God spoke to my heart in my devotional time in this verse. And God spoke to me. That's the verse that says, and they cried out to God in the middle of the distress, in the middle of the affliction. I'm going to try to put it in, in from Spanish, not in English. But, but they cried out to God. Sorry that it was not in the, in the <laughs> but I feel I, sh I, want, I need to share this with you. They cried out to God in the middle of the storm, and he took the distress. Then he bring calm in the storm, And took me to the desired place. And I said, God, what's my desired place? What's the place? You can read it in Psalms 107, verse 28 to 30, if you have it in your time. What's my desired place? What's our desired place? That was in my Sunday morning devotional. What's the place where, where, where I want to be? If there were any weren't any restriction, any financial restriction, any difficulty as a minister, as a missionary, if I didn't have a crisis, where do you want me to go? We had an offer to come to the U.S. A nice big church offered us to come and be their pastor. And you know, for every Latino come to the U.S. with a job offer, it's like heaven. So we came to have the conversation, but we didn't feel. We said, I told with my wife, I said, no, 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 no. This is not where God is leading us. I love this country. I love this nation. But this is not where God is calling us. I said, thank you for the offer, but we are not accepting. So we went back home. I said, God, if it is not the U.S., where do you want us to go? What's the next, the next level? Because we felt that it was time to leave Ecuador. You know when you feel that the season is over in your life, you say, okay, I'm here, but I know this is time for us to leave. So we didn't felt that, but we didn't know where to go. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. <laughs> we were in trouble. Hey, what happened? I was got so excited. <laughs> so we felt that it was time for us to leave Ecuador, but we didn't know where to go. So we said, what's my desired heaven, my desired place? And to my mind came Brazil. I said, I, I, I would love to go to Brazil. I would really love to go to Brazil. But three years ago, we tried to go to Brazil, and the, Lord's were, the doors were closed. And we said, but, but Lord, why? If we try to go before, now I feel you're telling me that you can go. And God spoke to me and said, because they were affliction in your heart. And when you have affliction in your heart, God keeps you where you need to be. When the affliction is gone, when the, the, the affliction, the distress is going, 
You can go wherever you want. <clears throat> but as you are in affliction in your heart, God takes you and keeps you in a place wherever you don't want to be. If, even if you don't want to be there, it's the place where you need to be. But when you put that affliction before the throne, when you trust in God and you share with God your heart, and he takes the affliction, as the psalm said, so you can go where you want to go. I said, I didn't allow you to go to Brazil before because they were affliction in your heart, and you needed to be here. But now you reduce your pace, you are understood the process, go wherever you go. That was Sunday morning in my devotional. Sunday night, I was sleeping. I couldn't sleep. God started speaking to me. Da, 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 da. I couldn't sleep moving here. You know those nights where you move one side, you go to the coach. You couldn't sleep. You go to the kitchen. You get some water. You can. And my wife, 2 a.m., like, what happened, Cruz? I'm trying to sleep. I said, I couldn't sleep. God is speaking to me. And she said, what God is speaking to you? And I said, God is telling me, go, go to Brazil now. Now, yes, now. He's telling me, go to Brazil now. My wife was seven and a half months pregnant, and it didn't have, make sense for us. But she said, Cruz, you have always been our compass. If God is talk, t telling you, let's go. That was Monday morning. We went to the doctor. Doctor, is she able to travel? Yes, but you need to go as, much, as fast as possible because she's seven and a half months, so go now. I said, wow. <laughs> then we talk with, the, we call the lady we had the dream with in Brazil. We say, hey, we have this dream. We feel God is leading us to go there. She said, yes, brother, come. You are welcome. That's what I was needing. God is revealing to you. Come, we can work together. She had a foundation where she takes care of 6,000 people every day. Every day, 6,000 people. And she said, I know how to reach communities, but I don't know how to plant churches. I said, ha, ha, I can help you. And then we talked with the team. Hey, we are considering, and the team said, yes, if we are talking about going global, we need a global hub. So we moved, that was Monday. Thursday, Tuesday, sorry, Tuesday, we bought the tickets. Next Tuesday, we were flying to Brazil. In one week, we moved, we did plans, all family, and in one week, we were landing in Brazil. It was crazy, but we had the confidence that God was leading us to go there. Once we settled there six months ago, we have been learning the language. Now I preach in Portuguese, so I learned I learn Portuguese. Uh, the girls are getting used to, but God has been a blessing for us in the way that now we feel that we are in the place where we must be. And since we established there, it's amazing what's happening around our ministry. So now, what we are doing as a ministry, if, could you go please, is helping pastors. Uh, and we do the birth of a global movement because... Uh, we, we put a name, Expand Global, as the name of the ministry. And the, the work is to help pastors to develop church, thriving churches, to accelerate the work of the Great Commission, adding value to the pastor in their spiritual, emotional, physical, and cognitive way and health so they could develop. Because the health of a pastor will determine the health of a church. We cannot have a healthy church if we don't have a healthy pastor. So we start focusing and preparing the way, the work for the pastors. So healthy pastor takes us to healthy leaders, to healthy members, to healthy churches, so we can have healthy and influential communities. So do you remember the numbers that I share? The Baptist people reach leader. Now, in one year of ministry, we triple the number. It's amazing. It's amazing. When we focus in the pastor, the number is triple. So you can go back. So in six months, uh, 1,787 leaders 
and 633, 37 pastors. It's amazing. You know, when sometimes we are too hooked to the past, to the things that are going good, that we, uh, uh, we are so afraid to jump to the next level. Because when, when, when you jump to the next level, there is a moment where you need to take, to, to leave the past, but you still don't have the future in your hand. You're like in a limbo. You know the trapezist? Is a, is a good word, trapezist? Those in this, when, when they jump to one place, whoo, whoo, you know? There is a moment when they are in the air. They lose the bar, but they are still not in with the bar. Sometimes we are afraid to be in that season because we want to be safe. We want to be in what works. What we were doing worked and worked really good. But God was taking us to a new level as a ministry. But in order to get into the new ministry, to new season, we needed to go through the process. And that's a word for you. I'm not here to preach. Yes, I'm here to preach. <laughs> I'm here to give you a report, but I want to talk to your heart. Don't be afraid to let go the past, even though you don't have your future. And don't be afraid about the process. Because in between, it's going to be tough. You're going to be in the air. You don't, you're not going to be hooked to any of two bars, but you have God who is security in you, who is saying, hey, I'm not going to leave you. So all this process, we expand global, which is, is the same ministry, the Pony Hours, but this is the brand, ministry brand, expand global. We've been able to equip 1,787 leaders and 637 pastors in four countries where we started. We started a, a, a piloting, not like 19 countries like before. We started in Venezuela, in Bolivia, in Colombia, and in the U.S., even here in the U.S., because I don't know if you know that, but this is a country that really needs the gospel. <laughs> that really needs the church, that really needs new churches, more churches and stronger churches. So the, UN, the United States of America is no longer a place to send missionaries. It's a, it's a mission field now. And that's how we see it. From there, we see the U.S. as a mission field, as a way and as an opportunity to also, because it's a global. It's not U.S. and the rest of the world. Now we're a global community with the need of the gospel and the kingdom of God. So we start to, we say, what? How it looks like if we start doing this in the U.S.? And the United States being a country that has blessed us in a mighty way, what if we do the same and we blessed the United States with what we have, which is this? So we start doing that in four countries. Now it's in we opened Peru and Brazil as well, so we are now in six countries, and it's amazing what we've done. What we used to do in 19 countries, now we are doing in, five, in six countries. What it used to take us two years, we are doing it in one year. It's not about the numbers. It's about the transformation that is happening in those places. Churches, that are experienced an ox oxygen of God. And I want to share one of the stories. Actually, I have three stories to share. I love the story of Luis. Luis and Maribel, they are in Bolivia. <laughs> Last year, I was invited to a congress in a local church, to a conference. And you know, sometimes when, when you are too much time in different places, you say, ah, a prophetic conference in a local church, you're like, ah, you like camp meetings, you know, like, ha, ha. So I said no, but that date, I had a, 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 a meeting in Bolivia. I said, okay, I'm going to spend, I'm going to stay one extra night, and I go to the local church conference. When I showed up at that local church conference, 
over 500 people were there, worshiping with such a passion. I've never seen the, ex the spirit that I felt that in that night. I said, wow, amazing. So I preached that night. I didn't know the pastor. But he took me for dinner, you know, every good evangelical Christian tradition. After a good service, a good meal. So he took me for dinner, and he said, Dr. Cruz, you don't know me. But last year, I heard you talking about Expand Global, about the vision. I got your material, and I started applying it. Two years ago, we were 75 people in the church. Now we are 600, and we don't know how to grow. <laughs> what? Thank you, he said. Because without knowing, you helped me to grow in my church. I cry. Literally, I cry. I said, wow, this is working. So I start having a relationship with Luis. I, of course, that I brought him to my team. <laughs> I recruit him. And for one year, I have been mentoring him. Now, if you see that picture that was taken last week, actually, this week, we are Sunday. But it was uh, when, first Tuesday, I was in Bolivia. This picture was taken in Bolivia last Tuesday. This is a fresh picture, this one. This was taken Tuesday in Bolivia. What I did with Luis that helped him to develop his church, now he's doing with all these pastors. <laughs> it's amazing. So their churches are now revitalized, and he's building a movement. And now Luis has a number of pastors and leaders under his mentoring that now I'm, I don't need to go to Bolivia. He's doing what I'm supposed to do. He's a champion. He's the champion now. It's amazing. So Luis, it's amazing what's doing there in Bolivia. So the next story that I want to share is, is about Israel. I've met Israel for many years. Uh, we, he's a pastor from the same church, uh, sorry, from the same city where, I, where we started the Bible school. So I met him there. Uh, we are the same generation. He has a beautiful family. And one day he called me and said, Cruz, I'm tired of doing what I'm doing. His dad passed away, left the church, and he took over the church. So he's past, he was pastoring that church. I said, I need mentoring. I don't know what to do. So I started mentoring him and doing this, adding value spiritually, emotionally, physically. Actually, he's losing weight now. He's working with me. I said, man, we need to lose weight. You, you need to lose weight. You need, I need you more athletic, more, uh, I need to run with you, you know, because it's, it's a holistic process. So Israel realized that through the process and the training and the mentoring that he said, okay, I need to quit the church. So he quit the local church, the central church, and he took six pastors from the local church and started multiplying the church. In one year, in two years, sorry, Israel is now the pastor of the seven pastors, including, including the, 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 the mother church or the central church. Now, their church has multiplied six times. So they have six campuses, they call here in the U.S., six campuses with six pastors. And he said, this is amazing. My church is multiplying itself. We were just one church, now we are seven. And here, quick, the, lock, the central church appointed the pastors, and now what he did, what he does, is pastoring the seven pastors. But he said, I'm going to do this with other pastors. This year, this year, we are training in Venezuela 700 pastors. It's amazing. They are not in the report because they have, we haven't finished. But next year, if God wills, I'll come back. You're going to see what happened. <laughs> the number of pastors in Venezuela. Again, 
He's the champion. He's who is doing it. I'm just working in his, with Israel. I'm just multiplying what I learned and the process in Israel, and he's doing now the process. We are now in over 300 pastors, and in August, we have 400 pastor, more pastors. It's amazing. He's the champion and the family. And, uh, and the, the other story that I want to share with you is the story of Daniel. I love the story of Daniel. Daniel is a lawyer in Costa Rica. It's Costa Rica. In Costa Rica, Daniel is, is a lawyer. And one day he called, uh, I, we had a, a contact with him and said, I'm tired. I'm tired of being Christian. It's kind of boring. The same every Sunday, going to church, pay my tithes, worshiping, sitting down. I need to do something else for God. I feel like this is not what Jesus asked me to do. He went through the process. He were trained. And he started a group. When I heard about his story, they invited me to, to the very first baptisms to be celebrated in his church in Costa Rica. When I got into the place, they start telling me about the place. The place where we were in the church used to be a bar. And every day they walked through the process, through, through the wall, and they prayed for that place. He and his mom, this place is going to be a church. This place is going to be a church. In the name of Jesus, this place is going to be a church. So the bar broke, the owner got saved, and literally gave the keys of the place to Daniel and said, you do whatever you want. Plant the church here. So <laughs> it's amazing. So the very first baptisms we celebrated in, Daniel, in that place, here I am with him and baptized him. We baptized people in a place that used to be a bar. Baptizing somebody in a place that used to be a bar, bringing them to life is a real beautiful picture of the transformation that God brings when he's on board and on control, in control of the process. This picture, most of these ladies that graduated in the, the equivalent to the, how do you call here, the Ministry, MCA, no, ministry training that you have in Cleveland, like the certificate, MIP. This is a picture of the MIP. Most of the ladies, the, these three ladies that you see there, they used to be waitress. Yeah, they used to be waitress in the bar. And now, they are ministers. <laughs> Praise God. They used to serve drinks, um, I don't know what else. And now they are serving the almighty transformative God. That's an image of transformation. And Daniel now planted a new, a new church close by his place. And he said, Pastor, I want to do this in Costa Rica with others. He's now equipping 31 leaders in his region to do the same and bring transformation. So as you see, we were hooked to our past. We went through a crisis, and now God is bringing new life and new expectation of the ministry that we are doing. And the good part of this, they are the champion. They are the champion. I don't need to go like crazy in those countries. I just need to focus on them. It sounds like a Jesus' model. <laughs> And I can dedicate more time to my children, to my family, to the people, and to keep working. We are now opening Kenya. There are opportunities in Kenya to open the work that we are doing. Opportunities in Europe. So I can now leave them doing their work and focusing in opening new countries and new regions and new continents that now need help. But family... We need you. <laughs> because we cannot do this by ourselves. This is a partner. All what we are doing 
all what we are doing is because of you. It's because of your support. It's because of your prayers. I love the fact that Juliana, his wife, when they came, the very first thing they said, I'm other of you, they said, we are praying for you every day. You have no idea how comfort that brings to our soul when you know that there is people every day, even if we see once a year, but you know that every day you are praying for us. It's amazing. But also, thank you for your offering. Campsville Church has been a faithful church the last eight years that has supported and has given to us in a beautiful way. But this morning, I brought you a challenge. I brought you five nations, actually six nations to you. I brought you Costa Rica, Bolivia, Brazil, Peru, Colombia, and in the, the US, six countries with four champions that they are running processes in Vene ah, Venezuela, seven countries. They are doing the same. It's not that you're going to now start helping them. No? It's, 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 a, it's the ministry. But I want to encourage you to adopt one of those projects. I want to encourage you to say, Pastor Cruz, you know what? I'm going to keep giving, but now with more purpose. Not, not because of, no. You are giving to our ministry, but you have a sponsor certification. You know who are you helping to. At the end of the service, I'll be there in that table. And if you want to sponsor, stray one of those through the church, through the local church, you can take one certificate, fill one form, say who are you want to sponsor, commit what you want to do in, a, in, in the process, in the giving, and start giving through the local church with that pur purpose, through our project number that is the same that the church has been always doing. But I want to encourage you to adopt them. Don't quit giving other missionaries, okay? Unless it's Wayne Wozniak. If it is Wayne Wozniak, stop giving him. <laughs> and give to me. And when he comes, say that. <laughs> say to him, hey, Pastor Cruz said that we must stop giving to you and now give more to him. <laughs> it's something funny. Wayne is my mentor. Uh, I love him. Most of the things that we have done or we have learned, as you see my presentation, have a Wayne Wozniak brand. <laughs> but there is something very interesting. Now, starting this general assembly, I've been appointed to lead the church in South America North. That includes Colombia, Venezuela, Peru, and Ecuador. So starting in general assembly, I'll be Wayne Wozniak's boss. <laughs> it's amazing. I love it. I love it because he's been always been my mentor. I've learned from, actually, if I have something, Wayne, I'm here, I'm stuck here. But now, that's what I was looking for, my tie and my suit, because I will be superintendent of these four countries. <laughs> so now, I'll be Wayne Wozniak's boss. It's amazing. It's amazing what God does. That means that he's done a good job. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, if you are interested in sponsor one of those countries, one of those projects, you, we have certificates. You can fill the form up, keep giving, and thank you again. Thank you so very much for all what you do. Don't forget these pills that I have shared with you. Don't be afraid about what's coming, even though it's a crisis, because after the crisis, God has always, God always had a new season for us. Keep faithful, even though this country is being impacted. I know. We feel. We were talking in the missionary environment, how difficult it's been. So many churches have stopped giving. But the world still needs Jesus. We still need you. And let's partner together to make a difference and bring transformation in our nation and even here in the United States. Let me pray.
Father, thank you for Pastor Tony, Pastor Brett, for their families. Thank you for the Kempsville Church, who's been a faithful church during these years, helping us, sending us, supporting in prayers, in giving, making a huge difference in all what we do. Thank you, Father, for the blessing of being together in this process. But this morning I'm bringing new champions. This morning I'm bringing new challenges. Lord, help us. Give us the resources, the vision, the passion to make a real difference and bring transformation, salvation, life to the nations. We pray, Lord, for Colombia, for Peru, for Bolivia, for Brazil, for Venezuela, for Costa Rica, even for the U.S., May your presence, may your blood wash those countries for Kenya who is coming now. And may, and help us, Lord, to enjoy the contentment and the fullness of serving you through going, through praying, and through gift. Thank you, Lord. Bless this church. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And amen. Family, if you want to take one sponsorship certificate, you're welcome to do it. Train, equip a pastor and a leader. The process of a church costs to us $250 a year for pastor, for church. So if you want to adopt one of the projects, you can do it. If there's any other amount that you want to put in your heart, that's perfect. But Training one pastor is $250. But in Venezuela, we have 700 pastors. Do your math. Second, there are some brochures about our ministry, about us. If you want, you're welcome to take one of those and keep putting your referee and keep us in your prayer. And third, if you want to know more about Span Global and what we are doing this new season, we've brought some uh, information with more stories um, about the process, about what we do, our vision. You are welcome to take for free as well. They are a gift for you. God bless you. We love you. See you soon. Thank you, Pastor. It's awesome to hear what the Lord is doing throughout the world, huh? A ministry that started in Venezuela has gone from South America, Central America, is now impacting globally what the Lord is doing through Cruz's life, through the ministry and these champions that he has found in each country. Just thankful for the Lord. He's so faithful to do these things where we couldn't even imagine those things so many years ago, but he's been faithful along the way. We take those risks that Cruz was mentioning. You can't just stay in that same spot that you've always been in. Sometimes we have to take that leap that God's calling us to. When we don't know that we're going to land on the other side, we don't know that there's that bar there, but we know that God is faithful. And that if he's calling us to make that leap, he's going to provide something on that other side. He's going to provide that path that we may not see in that moment. It's awesome to hear those stories. And let's give a hand clap for the Lord for what he's doing in those countries. But please be a part of this process and partnering with Cruz and what he's doing. Go back to his table as you leave today. Check out all the materials that he mentioned. But find a, one of those countries that you want to support through Cruz. You can, like he said, you can give through the church. You can mark it each month as Paniagua missions or Expan missions, things like that. You can put it there, and we will make sure it gets there. Every month we send a check through world missions that goes to the Paniaguas and to their ministry. And all the giving that you give, and then also what we've had in the budget for giving to that as well. So please partner in that. Continue in that process. Join with him. Join in what the Lord is doing throughout the world. It's a great opportunity for us as a church, and we don't want to pass that by. So as we transition today, I want to let you know about some things that we have coming up um, here at Kempsville Church, how you can get involved, how we can continue to spur one another on. First off, we have men's breakfast. <laughs> Guys, we had a great time last, uh, last month. Make sure to join us this month. We want to have you out for that. 
We can share with one another about what's going on in our lives. And we always have great food. This month, it's French toast is our main item. Awesome fellowship and a relevant devotion. So that's going to be July 13th at 9 a.m. in the multi-purpose room. Bring a friend. Bring every guy you know. Invite the guys that are around you right now. Make sure they're there for men's breakfast. We're going to have a great time again. Uh, Cruz was sharing about the uh, importance of baptism and what it means when someone joins that ministry joins what God is doing in their lives, and they make that outward expression of the inward work that God is doing. We have a chance for that as well. Baptism at the Bay is going to be July 21st at 5 p.m. We're getting together at First Landing State Park at 2500 Shore Drive. Uh, Freedom Fellowship is going to be joining us for that, so we're going to have a great celebration together. If you've never been baptized or if you've rededicated your life to the Lord and would like to get baptized again, please sign up for that at the back table or online. And everyone else, maybe you're not getting baptized and you think this announcement doesn't pertain to me. It absolutely does. Come out there to celebrate those that are being baptized. They are taking this step, and we're their church family. We want to be with them. We want to celebrate with them. We want to talk about what the Lord has been doing in them and in their lot and through them. So let's be there for that, be part of that process. So everyone be there at 5 p.m. Whether you're being baptized or not, we want to see you there. And we have some videos for an upcoming conference. going to help us focus on home this year. I want you in the building if you can be, but if you can't be, I would love for you to be registered virtually, gather your girls, gather your friends from church, and let's all be desperate for Jesus together. Ladies, that sounds like a time in the Lord that's going to make the guys jealous of that. So make sure that you join for that simulcast that we're going to do here at Kempsville Church of the Desperate for Jesus Conference. Uh, she mentioned those virtual churches. We're going to be one of those churches that are hosting that. You want to be a part of that process. It's going to be Friday evening, July 26th, and Saturday, July 27th. It's going to be down in the multi-purpose room. More details are coming in the coming weeks, but I want to make sure that you knew about the conference. See that little clip of what's going to be happening. Um, so mark your calendars. You want to be there, ladies. It's going to be an awesome time together. We've hosted this in the past, and it's been a wonderful time with the ladies here as you're sharing in the ministry that's going on in Texas, but we can have it here as well. The Lord's able to touch us all the way from Texas over to here during that simulcast of that, that ministry. So ladies, put that on your calendars. Be ready for that conference. Another thing we have coming up is Kids' Turn. Anybody excited for Kids' Turn when they come every year? So we're hosting them again. It will be August 11th through 14th at 6.30 p.m. each night. Uh, this kids' event includes games, worship, Elmer the Puppet, a message from Pastor Carl, and foam machine, and even more. It's a great time. It's not just a set. It's a time for lives to be transformed, for these kids to come and meet Jesus. They're coming for a lot of fun, but they're going to get something different when they're here. They're going to find the Lord. Um, if you have elementary age kids, you want to make plans for them to be here all four nights. You know, I've had people in the past ask, well, do I need to come all four nights? It changes every night. A lot of the process and the elements are the same, but the message is different. There's something new that they will get every night. So please make your plans to be here every single one of those nights. And pre-registration is now available on our website, so you don't have to wait. If you know your kids are going to be here, hop on our website, sign them up now so we can get them all registered. Let your friends and family know they can get pre-registered as well. We're going to have cards and everything else coming soon where you can pass those out to, to everyone you know. But let's get excited for Kids' Turn, and in the coming weeks, there'll be ways where you can sign up to serve during Kids' Turn. So not only if your parents do you need to mark your calendar for this, everyone should mark their calendar to know, hey, I have a role at Kids' Turn. I can serve. I can be a quiet sea watcher. I can be the banker. I can do registration. There's about a 1,000 places you can serve during Kids' Turn. So get excited for that and get that on your calendar so you know, hey, I, I'm not scheduling anything else for these nights. I want to be here for Kids' Turn. Next up, we have pizza with the pastors. If you received a welcome box this morning, welcome. We're so glad that you're here at Kempsville Church. There's an invitation in there for you for pizza with the pastors. We'd love for you to be a part of that. It happens on the first Sunday of every month, and the next one is July 7th, which is next Sunday. Uh, if you could sign up at the back table or online to let, you, let us know that you plan to come so we can make sure we have plenty of pizza for you. We don't want anyone to come and not have pizza, so please sign up so we know how many to plan for. 
If you have a friend that you want to bring to church and you want to come join them for Pizza with the Pastors, you can do that too. So it might be a good time to invite someone and say, hey, come to church with me. We can go have pizza afterwards. So come and join us for, for Pizza with the Pastors as well. If you have any questions about any of our announcements this morning, you can see a member of our Connect team. They have the How Can I Help You lanyards. If you didn't receive a welcome box this morning, but this is your first Sunday, please see Mike Folkingham in the back. He has some for you. If you filled out a Connect card but haven't had a chance to turn that in, or maybe after hearing Cruz's message this morning, you want to give to one of those ministries and you hadn't anticipated doing that when the offering came through, you can place those in the boxes in either side of the foyers as well. I think that's all that I have for announcements. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for a wonderful Sunday in your house, Lord. To worship together with our brothers and sisters is one thing, but to hear about how you're touching the world. You're working everywhere, Lord. You are global, and we get a chance to partner with that. I just thank you for that opportunity that you involve your people in what you are doing in this world. There are ways that we can do that right here in the United States, but there's ways that we can help those that have been sent to other countries too. I pray that we engage in each and every aspect that we have to do that, Lord. I pray as we go out this week that your Holy Spirit guides us to reach those around us, share your love with someone else. I pray that we're willing to take those risks in our lives that you've called us to, Lord, that we can leap out and take those leaps of faith that you've called us to, Lord, knowing that you will catch us on the other side. We pray in expectation of all that you're going to do and for your Holy Spirit to guide us every step of the way. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. So may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and turn his countenance toward you. May he give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Have a great Sunday. Make sure to stop by uh, Pastor Cruz's booth over there as well.